Welcome again to BrandyLibrary.tv and a bit special of an ambassador series today because we are talking about Armagnac and not just Armagnac but the Lobad Armagnac with Denis Lesgourg here. How are Hi. you Denis? How are you Flavien? Very good, <laughs> nice to have you here. Likewise. So, um, Lobad, what is it? Where is it from? How does it taste? I want to hear everything about it. Uh, Chateau de Lobad is uh, a very old estate, single estate, uh, Bas Armagnac. Uh, so obviously produced in Gascony. Um, and the estate was built in 1870, so a long time ago. Uh, and we are now the third generation um, on board. Uh, my grandfather acquired the property back in 1974. At that time, it was um, a fantastic farm with uh, great potential in terms of terroir and in terms of uh, vineyard and mm -hmm. the facilities and inventories, but it was a sleeping house. Um, so, yeah, a lot of things have been done since uh, 1974 to really uh, put uh, Chateau de Lobad as one of the top uh, Bas Armagnac mm -hmm. producer. Yeah, because now when, uh, when people mention Armagnac, at least here in the US, right away Lobad uh, comes to mind. There are other producers and very good producers that are available in, in, in the US, but you've been here for quite a while. Oh yes, uh, the, the idea uh, of my grandfather at that time was to really bet on the quality only. And in order to bet on the quality, the first thing was to re, you know, be able to um, hold and manage the vineyard, the raw material, in order to produce white wine and distill them and age them to produce single estate Armagnac. Uh, so in the last 30 years, uh, then my father really uh, worked very hard in order to promote our house, uh, not only in France, which is a very important market, you know, domestic mm -hmm. market for Armagnac is very, uh, very substantial. French uh, love Armagnac and uh, really enjoy our, our Armagnacs. But uh, to be able to really educate uh, the consumer towards Armagnac in the foreign market. That was the idea. So now, why should people drink Armagnac? What's special about Armagnac in general before we talk about, about Lobad? I think that Armagnac is full of authenticity. It's packed with culture. It's packed with a very long heritage. Don't forget that Armagnac was, uh, you know, created or invented a long, long time ago. Last year in 2010, we celebrated 700 years. The first race of Armagnac dates back from 1310. So that's nearly that's a while back. Yeah, and nearly 200 uh, years before other brandy, including cognac. So uh -huh. that's that's quite uh, impressive. So you're saying that Gascony is not, is not just about the corn and the ducks. It's N also about brandy. It's about uh, good living in uh -huh. general. It's so true. it's it's about uh, great gastronomy. It's about Armagnac. It's about uh, uh, culture, it's about uh, uh, bullfighting, it's about uh, rugby, you know, mm -hmm. we, 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 we like to live very strong and uh, uh, in Gascony and... Uh, live strong, eat well and, and, and drink potent. Yes, that's, that's, that's our idea and, uh, you know, people live very long time in Gascony because they, they, they drink good stuff and they eat, uh, they eat good as well. So all that's a the, fact. All of those uh, foie gras meals. Yeah. Foie gras with the appetizer and foie gras with the second we, course and... And the Armagnac as well. It's a great pairing. pairing. I yeah. don't know if you've yeah. tried it, yeah. but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's a fantastic pairing, yeah. All right, so now, a bit more specifically uh, about Lobad. What, what grapes are we talking about? This is wine to start with. Um, how is it uh, fermented, distilled, uh, barreled, and all of this? All right, first of all, Armagnac is, uh, is a brandy. So uh, brandy means it's a uh, it's, uh, spirit made out of uh, wine. Um, so <clears throat> as, a, as a general sense, uh, you have four grapes that are commonly used in Armagnac that are Uni Blanc, Colombard, Baco, and Folle Blanche. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a series and of other more uh, you know, obscure grapes that are typical from the region. Uh, Plan de Grèce, Jurançon, mm -hmm. and many, many other grapes that truly uh, now are really accounting for a few, very few percentage of the total production. However, at Chateau de Lobade, we've always been very keen to maintain those uh, varietals in order to make some 
um, some experiments and mm -hmm. to see how it can really go and complete in the blends of our Armagnac. In short, I think that the real, uh, the real value of Armagnac now is that it's not only counting up with the Uni Blanc, but uh, just to name two grapes that to us are really a fantastic grape are the Baco and the Folle Blanche. And this is really an asset for, for Armagnac. When you say Baco, I think uh, the EU had something against uh, Baco a few years back. Yeah, uh, first of all, Baco, uh, the Baco that we are talking about is the Baco Noir, uh, and more precisely, the scientist's name is 22A. Uh, to make a story short, Mr. Baco was a teacher back in 1890 at the time of the phylloxera was striking in France and in Europe, and he was making a lot of uh, experiments to find out <coughs> grapes that could uh, really battle this for phylloxera. And, 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 and he found out uh, that it, this Baco grape, that had no name at that time, uh, was the 22nd plant on the row A, hence the name 22A. So um, Baco is truly a fantastic grape, but uh, in the 90s, yeah, we had to really um, talk and, uh, and, and, and prove to the people at the UE that this grape was not uh, harmful or was not any kind of uh, putting in danger the consumer. Uh, it took 10 years and uh, um, after 10 years, finally, the, the technocratic or the bureaucratic allowed again this, this grape, this fantastic grape, mm -hmm. to be produced and used as to be part of the Armagnac production. And just, uh, just to tell you how, how, how tough it has been, uh, a lot of producers in Armagnac has ripped off some of their vineyards, very sadly, uh, because they could not uh, sustain to hold some vineyard that was not uh, able to uh, produce any wine for mm -hmm. the Armagnac. Luckily, my father at that time uh, envisioned that um, it was very important to keep this vineyard. So we were just harvesting, leaving the grape on the ground and not being able to use them in our blends or our vintages. Mm -hmm. So it's been, let's say, a financial uh, hit. And, uh, but uh, I, I'm very, very thankful uh, to my father to have this vision to say, OK, no way we're going to rip off this vineyard. This is a treasury. This is something that it's part of our heritage, of uh, our culture, and of our complexity in our Armagnac. Yeah. So back in 2000, the law changed again, and we've been able to use uh, very strongly, uh, massively, the Baco. And now Lobat is the number one grower of ba Baco oh. grapes. So that's, that's but so now, do you, do you harvest um, separately? Do you let the wine ferment separately, and you distill separately the different grapes? Yes, absolutely. The, the, the process is always which uh, we, we separate all, all the grapes in order to have the best traceability possible, uh, and in order to be able to really master the blend and to be able to really play with this great um, uh, diversity of a uh, few dimensions. Mm -hmm. the, the grape dimension, uh, the year dimension for the, vent for the blends, uh, but we go also to the, to the parcel dimension and to, mm -hmm. to the concept of single estate vineyard. Um, you know, a baco that might grow in that kind of soil, in that particular area, might not give the same white wine and final distilled yeah. product as another one. So we do everything separated. Um, and as a result, when the barrel ages at Lobad, and uh, I'm sure you've seen that, mm -hmm. they all bear uh, what we call an ID, and where you, s you can see the, the vintage, you can see the alcohol strength, natural alcohol, alcohol strength, the varietal, and, and also the parcel. Mm -hmm. And it's only at the last uh, um, moment, at the last uh, stages of blending, um, either it's for a vintage or for a blend, that uh, we're going to use those barrels and blend, toge blend them see. together. What are, what are the differences, uh, really, between, say, Colombard, Folle yeah. Blanche, Baco? Definitely, you can, you can catch the difference. And that's the beauty of Armagnac. I mean, uh, and, and, and I don't want to make any comparison. That's not the, the idea. But still, Armagnac is great for that because it's full of diversity from one house to the other one. But also, thanks to, the, the, to those four grapes, thanks to the, to the terroir as well. Bas Armagnac is very different from the Tenares mm -hmm. soil. Um, so, um, just to try to, 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 to say the difference is that Fol Blanche is known for exuberant, super expressful floral notes. 
that you can smell uh, these uh, white fruit, dry fruit, uh, almost sometimes white pepper notes, um, uh, a hint of orange peel. This is the Folle Blanche. Mm -hmm. This is very aromatic. This is very appealing, you know, on the nose. Um, as far as the Baco goes, this is our, our favorite grape. I mean, no secret about that. If I had to choose and pick one grape, that would be the Baco. If I had to rip off uh, the three other grapes and keep the Baco, that would be something that I could do. Baco is fantastic over the time. And because at Lobad we age very long our Armagnac, mm -hmm. it is truly the Baco that's going to bring the complexity over the time, the strength, the backbone of the Armagnac, uh, the architecture and the, the mouth feeling. Mm. Over the time, Baco reveals a lot of complex um, taste and uh, nuances. And, you know, Baco, Baco is to me the most complex grape over the time for the Armagnac. Then Uniblanc is there just for the, its acidity on, as, a, as a base wine and also its capacity to age. But it's a more neutral grape and the Colombar is also quite aromatic, but it accounts for a less proportion in the blends. Okay. All right, so Denis, uh, what do we have here today? It's only, I know you've got a, a, a very wide range of Armagnacs and especially vintages, of course, going back to well, over a century ago. We, we, have, we have a few, a few batches of, uh, you know, pre-1900, uh, pre um, 1893, 18, a, few, a few vintages that are before 1900. Very, very few left, but but none of those here today. So. No, no. But I brought you the best. All right, I'll take that. The, the best for the best, you know, for Brandy Library. <laughs> I wanted to show um, a great uh, se selection of very diverse Armagnac, uh, still with the style of Chateau de Lobade, and I'm I'm going to tell you what maybe is our style, why we are we are tasting some of them, and uh, I brought you a VSOP and XO. Uh, and two other blends that we call Intemporel number no. five and Extra. So that's, those are four, four blends, uh, and I brought a single vintage, uh, 1974. Very good. Um, maybe we can try. Uh, I think I think we should because it all sounds wonderful. Okay. Um. Well, uh, we'll try this um, this blend Intemporel uh, number no. five, and before. Uh, we speak about this intemporel. Uh, just a quick, uh, a quick word about our two uh, other blends here: the VSOP and the XO. Uh, by law, a VSOP must be uh, in Armagnac four years of age. But um, in the case of Chateau de Lobade, we do a blend uh, of uh, at least 25 different haute vie, uh, and the youngest is six years, and the oldest is 12 years. So uh, we can I say see. that average is around nine years old for this great VSOP, which is very floral and um, you can tell that the Feuille Blanche in the blend uh, brings uh, all its uh, characteristic. Our EXO is probably our flagship. I mean, it's very, very well, uh, well acclaimed and appreciated by um, the connoisseur and our customers around the world. Uh, why? I think that uh, we, we bring a, a very, very highly complex product uh, on the EXO level that goes beyond uh, the, the EXO name. Why? Because EXO by law must be six years of age, but in this in our EXO from Lobad, the minimum is 12 years, and we go up to 25 years of age. So here, uh, logically, we're going to use a little bit more Baco and Colombard in the blend. 